welcome to another episode of the Wooly Ramblings podcast. My name is Nicole and this is a video podcast where I come and chat about all my fiber crafting, primarily knitting and spinning, though sometimes other fiber crafts that I dabble in as well. Welcome back. Happy New Year. I hope you all have had a wonderful holiday season and New Year and it's been a while. <laughs> I think I say that almost every episode because I just have not been able to get back into a regular filming schedule and I'm going to say it yet again, I'm hoping to be able to get back into a regular filming schedule and uploading schedule, but we know how that goes. <laughs> Anyways, so I do have a small sampling of things to share with you today and I hope you will enjoy. Um, so let's just jump right in with some finished objects. I actually have finished two finished objects since I have been away, but I only have one to show you today. Um, so we'll just start with that one first. And that is these little mittens. I do not have them laying nicely, but here they are. These are some mittens that I knit for my son for going on our annual Christmas tree hunt. We go every year up to the mountains and harvest a Christmas tree from the National Forest and bring it home as our Christmas tree. And so we always hope to find some snow and we were successful this year. And of course, last year, I noticed we needed mittens. And my hope was to have gotten mittens done for both my son and my daughter. That didn't happen. Um, I kind of did these very last minute, like this took me, these two took me 24 hours to complete. Um, these are the World's Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits. This is a free pattern you can get off Ravelry. Um, uh, the pattern sample shows them as just one solid color, but as you can see, I did a two colored mitten with the thumb, the tips, and the cuffs in blue and then green on the main part of the hand. Um, I was using up some leftover yarn which is from my other finished project which I will kind of chat a little bit about. Um, but I had a little bit left over which was from a project for my husband and my son had expressed that he would like some gloves like daddy so I decided to make them out of the same yarn. Um, this is, the green is our farm yarn, so Covered Bridge Farm, um, in the worsted weight, our worsted flock blend, and this is dyed in, um, a colorway that I'm calling Emerald City. It is not currently up on the shop, but I do have some that I hope to get uploaded in the new year, um, so if you like this color. Um, it has felted a little bit from play in the snow. Let's see if I can get it to. There we go. So it's got a little bit of fuzz, especially the blue. Contrasting color is Youthful Fiber Farm. Um, it is a worsted Jacob in this lovely blue color. And so that's what I use to stretch my color, my yarn a little bit more. And I have a smidge left of the green, which is good um, because I might be needing it. Um, this was a really easy pattern, super simple. I really don't have anything um, much to say about it because it was such an easy knit, easy to follow. I really enjoy Tin Can Knits style of pattern writing. So I, you know, these were great. And I do still plan to knit a, um, knit. A pair for my daughter. Um, hers will be all solid in the same yarn I used to knit her a hat last um, January, so a year ago. Um, I'd like to have her a nice little matching set. Um, she did get to wear that hat for the first time on our snow trip and it was very cute, still a little big, so she's got some growing room so we'll be able to get another season out of it I hope. My next finished object, which I do not have to show you because it is actually in my car, which is currently being worked on, um, is a pair of fingerless mitts for my husband. Um, the pattern I used was the World War II Inspired Gloves by Andrew Rao, and they are a 
set of um, fingerless gloves that have individual fingers rather than just the open top. Um, the idea was for them to be something for my husband to uh, drive to work wearing or doing some mild um, work outside. Um, now the pattern, funnily enough, I had planned for this pattern. Um, this green was picked out by my husband and tailored to his taste and I knew I was going to do the worsted because I knew, yarn because I knew I wanted to do this pattern specifically and I had planned on this for several months and I think in September I had checked to make sure I had the right weight and stuff before I dyed the yarn and stuff and then I came back when I was ready to cast on in I think November and the pattern was no longer available for download on Ravelry and I panicked. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I forgot to turn the furnace off. So luckily I was able to find the pattern um, elsewhere. I honestly don't remember off the top of my head where I found it, but I will link it below um, in case you want to knit it. The only thing I ran into was that the pattern is written for one size fits all type of fit. And I didn't do a gauge swatch because I really didn't think I would need to, but they came out massive. And I'm sure there is a man out there somewhere with large enough hands to have fit what I made. And of course, to me, it seemed incredibly massive because I have fairly small hands. Um, so my hands were like lost in it, like the fingertips were like, my fingers were barely sticking out out of the tops. And so... In order to solve this dilemma, I felted it, and I had to felt them so many times in my washer and dryer to get them down to size, and then I still ended up having to rip back some rows on the fingers so that my husband's fingers were not, like, lost in it, and he could still use his fingers. Um, ultimately, he's kind of uh, decided that he's not sure if the worsted weight is too heavy for what he was hoping for. I think he was hoping for something a little bit lighter and thinner um, just to make it easier to uh, work in. So he's kind of thinking that he wants me to go ahead and finish the tips and make them full gloves. So I haven't done that yet. We'll see if I get to that. Um, and if he likes them, if I do it that way. So, which is why I'm glad I have a little bit of leftover yarn from uh, the green that I didn't use at all on these uh, mins. Um, so those um, are my finished objects. I will try to stick in some B-roll or some pictures of the fingerless gloves. Um, I might just use the pattern page photos so you kind of know what they look like and um, I'll show them to you at a later date. Um, we'll see what happens with that. So let's move on to works in progress. I have two works in progress, one you've seen before and one that's new. So we'll start with the one that you've seen before, which you can kind of see a sneak peek back here. I guess I'll just grab it. Oh, I'm probably gonna knock everything on the floor. Okay, so this is my porcelain sweater by uh, Lean Home Samosi. I can't remember, Samo. Samso. Samso? <laughs> I remember last episode I looked up how to say her name and I forgot to do it before I sat down and started filming. But this is the porcelain sweater. Let's try to fit it all in screen here. And last time I showed you, I think I had only done to right about here. So I have finished the body of the sweater minus the collar and I'm now on Sleeve Island. And I remember telling you last time that I was playing a major game of yarn chicken. And this is a yarn chicken game that I am going to lose. And so I haven't been working on this pattern because I'm a little bit discouraged because I like it so much and I just don't want to get to the point of I've run out of yarn and I'm going to. So I'm currently on Sleep Island. I was kind of trying to work on knitting them both at the same time to try to maybe stretch the yarn and see if I can make it, but I'm not going to make it. Um, so the sleeves are supposed to have the uh, these two patterns on the bottom um, done on the sleeves. It's kind of a boxy oversized fit um, with a drop shoulder, 
and so that's kind of where I'm at with this I've been loving the pattern it's been such a fun knit super quick um, kind of addictive where you could just want to do one more row one more row but I just kind of feel that way anyway with color work in general um, so um, the yarn I'm using the white yarn which is the main color is our covered bridge farm flock blend DK and it's natural um, cream white the uh, burnt orange is a yarn that was dyed by my friend um, Chelsea um, who owns Rock Creek Romneys and it's from her flock of Romney sheep which is why I'm kind of at a stump I think I'm going to go ahead and reach out to her and see if by any chance she has a lost skein um, running around her studio um, and maybe even if she might be brave enough to try to uh, match the dye <laughs> um, it's been probably four four or five years since I got this yarn from her so I'm like really not holding my breath for that um, which is, again is why I'm kind of like oh I'm not into vests so it's not like I would want to do a vest especially because it has a drop shoulder it's already designed to kind of be off your shoulder anyways that you know your sleeve starting down here um, so it's on hold right now but here it is um, it's really funny because um, this designer is just released or is going to be releasing a new pattern that is very similar. It's the same kind of cut um, and uh, sweater construction and it has the same kind of concept of colorwork stripes down the body and on the sleeves but it's a little bit more mosaic inspired and it's called terracotta and she's designed it in yarn that's like exactly these colors um, so it's essentially this one uh, color combo just on a slightly different design same style of sweater and I thought that was really funny so it's almost like do I need to go ahead and knit that pattern but do it in the blue that she originally designed this one in <laughs> anyways but, but yeah um, I really like it and I hope someday I get to wear it <laughs> and that it doesn't end up just kind of living in the bag over here forever And finally is a new pattern that I've cast on recently. Let's see. Get it all straightened out to show you. A lot of things going on right now. This is a sweater I've mentioned before of wanting to knit. And I have finally cast it on. And that is... Oh goodness. Here we go. Okay. This sweet little sweater. So this is for my daughter. This is the Oh gosh, I'm gonna butcher it. I always wanna say anemone, like the sea creature, but it's anemone, like the flower. And I don't even think that's how you're supposed to say it. So don't quote me on that. Um, but it's a pattern by Knitting for Olive and I have known I have wanted to knit this as soon as Knitting for Olive released this pattern and um, sneak peeked it on their Instagram. I knew I wanted to knit this for her. It's so sweet. So it's got these lovely little flowers and right now it's all wrinkled and not looking very lovely. Um, but yeah, so that's this and so the flowers I have um, knit the body to where the undersleeves are going to be and I'm now um, this pattern can be done either where you knit it fully up and steak for the arms and neckline I have never done steaking before and in their pattern notes they said that if you have never steaked before this probably isn't a good pattern to learn on so I followed that directions and I am knitting the rest of the way up flat like they suggest so yes I am knitting color work flat um, it's mostly done um, where you're at most holding two colors at a time, though there is one row in each um, pattern repeat where you need to hold three, and I think this is the first time I've had to hold three at a time, so that's been a challenge. Um, but other than that, it again, it's one that's like really potato chippy to me. One more row, one more row, one more flower, one more flower, and has led to me staying up way too late 
just so I can get to the next flower. Um, the yarn I'm using is another one of our farm yarns. I kind of have, this episode is kind of farm yarn, um, my personal farm yarn heavy, um, but this is a Coverbridge Farm um, fingering weight yarn. Um, this is from one of our use Anne, and um, I dyed the yarn myself specifically for this pattern. This is not colors that I have in the shop. Um, I did these all as a set for this. Um, we don't really have very much of the fingering. I think we will have like one or two skeins left. Um, so maybe not enough to do a full pat or a big pattern, but, um, but yeah, I'll give you a, maybe a better close up of it. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. She's going to look so cute. <laughs> um, so I believe I'm knitting the two year size. So that's everything I have been working on as far as the knitting. I do have some progress to show you on my spinning, finally. I have not skeined it up yet, but I have finished, fully finished, uh, bobbins um, worth of yarn. It is plied, and I really thought I was going to just get this plied and I'd have one big skein and I'd be done. Well, I guess I did a really good job stretching that pink um, fiber that I was spinning. So if you're new and you want to binge watch all the episodes where I talk about the pink fiber, um, I had two ounces of it and I have made it stretch so much that the white, which I knew part of my plan was to spin the white heavier and the pink really thin and kind of create kind of a, I don't know if it'd be a textured yarn or what you'd want to call it, but um, that was part of my plan. Plus, I didn't think I would need to spin the white as thin because um, I only had two ounces and I had four ounces of the white, so it'd be fine, right? It's, it would be enough. Well, that wasn't the case. So I need to spin more white because I still have more pink. So, which is great because then I might actually be able to make something with for this. I might be able to make something for my daughter with this after all and not just have like a one skein floating around in my, you know, stash. Um, but also I wasn't anticipating. I was kind of thinking I was going to get to move on, which, well, I guess I'm not. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it spun up really nice. I spun the white and plied at Oregon Flock and Fiber this year while we were there vending and yeah I'm pretty excited to skein this up and see it a little bit better um but yeah so I guess I need to do some more spinning um so that is everything I have been working on I kind of whipped through that pretty quick I don't think I normally am able to do it that quick um maybe it's because I'm out of practice or maybe it's because I haven't been knitting a whole bunch lately but anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Um, I am hoping to do a couple of special episodes. I might go ahead and try to film one of them right now. So if you, the next video you watch or in two videos you watch and you see me again wearing this exact same get up, you will know why. <laughs> because I just sat down and filmed another. But we will, we will have to see if I feel up to doing that or if I have enough time because uh, children are napping and you never know when they're going to wake up and it always seems when I'm filming they take shorter naps and I don't know if that's because they can hear me talking. Our house has thin walls. <laughs> so anyways, um, I'm hoping to film a special episode of everything I made in 2023. Um, I know everybody's kind of already done these like new year videos already so I guess I'm a little bit late to the game, but I hope you'll still enjoy watching them. And then I'm also hoping to do a um, special episode of talking about things that I'm inspired to knit in 2024, um, a make nine sort of video, if you will. Um, I'm not really sure if we're doing make nines anymore, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna go ahead and film something like that to share with you. Um, 
so yeah i hope you've enjoyed this video that you are having a wonderful winter we are currently in the middle of an ice storm it's kind of on the tail end though i believe we are predicted to get more freezing rain tomorrow so i'm staying inside probably should do some knitting or spinning while well, i have to stay inside huh um, but anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye!